Very good evening and a warm welcome to you all. Uh, it's good to see you all here with us. Uh, before we begin our evening worship, Ian will run the notices as as so I'll hand over to you. Quite a number tonight, and uh, I think we're going to be holding the Beginner worship God by singing to his praise in Psalm 84 and uh, verses 1 to 6. How lovely is thy dwelling place, O Lord of hosts, to me. The tabernacles of thy gates, how pleasant, O Lord, they be. And that's down to the end of verse 6. Who passing thought of bakers, they let him to dig up wells. Also the rain that falleth down the pools with water fills. We'll sing this psalm to God's praise. <laughs>
We'll pray together. Our gracious God and our loving Heavenly Father, please draw near to us, Lord, and help us to draw near to you. We pray, Lord, that you would help us this evening to worship you our right. We pray, Lord, that we might worship you in spirit and in truth. We ask, O oh Lord, that you would give us the spirit of grace and supplication that we might pray to you, that you would give us the spirit of adoration that we might adore you, Lord, that we might see you in your love and grace and beauty. We do bless you and thank you this evening, Lord, that we are found together once again. Lord, we're so thankful that we have this amazing grace, Lord, this wonderful privilege, this joy of meeting together in the presence of our God in God's house. And we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that this evening you have gathered us because you have something to say to us. And you want to bless us, Lord, because you are the God who has given us every spiritual blessing in Christ Jesus. But more than that, Lord, you have gathered us here not only to speak to us, but first and foremost, Lord, that we might glorify your name and that we might worship you together as the body of Christ here in Leonardstown. Lord, we thank you for the worshiping community this evening. We thank you for your people in Leonardstown, Lord, for your people that you have in the Campsie Glen, for the people you have in Scotland, the UK, and to the ends of the earth. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing with them and through them, Lord, and that you are bringing great glory and honor to your own great and glorious name. We thank you that you are the Lord of hosts. You are the Lord of armies. You are the Lord of the hosts of heaven. We bless you and thank you, Lord, that all of creation belongs to you, that all of creation uh, obeys you, Lord. And yet, Lord, we find that the human heart is sinful and deceitful above all things. And we, we find, Lord, that even in our own hearts, we are rebellious. And we have to confess, Father, our sins. And we pray this evening, Lord, that you would forgive us according to your word that says if we are able to confess our sins, he is able to forgive our sins. And Lord, we praise you that you are sovereign and that in all things that you work things out for your own glory and your own purposes. And Lord, even the things that seem to be difficult in our lives, you are working it out for our good ultimately, Lord. You are conforming us to the image of Christ. And Lord, we are amazed that even the wrong choices we make and even our rebellion, you can turn it and use it for good. And tonight, Lord, we're sorry for our rebellion. We're sorry for our foolishness, Lord. And we pray you would forgive us. We thank you then this evening that your word is going out to the ends of the earth. We pray whatever your word is declared, that, Lord, you would give the sweet and precious unction of your blessed spirit and that you would minister to the hearts and minds of your people everywhere and that, Lord, you would call people to yourself and that many would come to faith in Jesus Christ throughout the ends of the earth, even this very day, Lord. We thank you that we know that you do act daily such as should be saved. 
we see the model of the ancient church, Lord. You acted daily such as should be seen. And we thank you that, Lord, you are working and you are building your church. We thank you that the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. We bless you, Lord, that you are sovereign. We thank you for the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for sending your Son to us. We thank you for the wonderful work, the wonderful person of Jesus. And we pray, Lord, that this evening we might have a, a wonderful sense, Lord, of your grace, your goodness, and a wonderful sense, Lord, of the glory of God in Jesus and the mercy of God in Jesus Christ. We pray, Father, for the free church and all that is going on in the denomination, Lord. We pray for your ministers, Lord, for those who preach, and we pray for those elders as well, Lord, and deacons in every uh, uh, congregation, Lord, that you would give wisdom to rule and to work uh, according to your will, Lord. And we pray that every congregation, Lord, in the free church would know the wonderful blessing of God and that indeed, Lord, you would add to our, uh, to our uh, membership, Lord. We pray that you would send families to hear the gospel, that you would send individuals and groups, that you would send families who are Christians to support and strengthen the fellowships that are already uh, worshipping you in the free church, Lord. And Father, we thank you for the work of ETS. We pray there will be wonderful blessings there as students are being equipped with the word of God. And we ask, Father, that you would truly bless our presbytery gospel and our dial. You know all the things that are going on, Father, and all the various, various nuances of every situation, often so complicated that we, we just arise out upon you, Lord, because we don't often know what to do. And we thank you for that, that you always know what to do. And we're so encouraged, Lord, that we can just come to you and pray to you and seek your face in your, in your word, Lord, and that you can give us the help and advice that we need through your word, spirit, and providence, Lord. And we pray you would. We remember the congregation here in Leonardstown, and uh, we thank you for the work and witness of Leonardstown over the years. And we pray, Father, that now there would be a wonderful ingathering of the harvest, Lord, that we would reap a wonderful harvest of souls, that your kingdom uh, would uh, come here to Leonardstown in a wonderful way, Lord, and that your name would be glorified in Leonardstown and in this land, Lord, and to the ends of the earth. We pray for ourselves as a nation, Father, that we would repent and turn to you, that us, those ruling us would have wisdom and humility, Lord, to realize that uh, they need you and they need your wisdom, guidance and sustenance. And we pray, Father, that you would really steer this nation back again on our course, Lord, that is seeking you and wanting to honour you. So bless uh, Westminster, Lord. Bless Hollywood. Bless all the local councils and councillors and all the ins and outs of the various things that are happening, Lord. We ask that you would bless those in authority everywhere in this land, Lord, that we might know the blessing of God as a people of God. We pray for the sick, Lord. There's so many, Lord, known to us, and we could, we just pause in our hearts, Lord, to, to bring them to you in our own hearts, each one of us, Lord. We just think of people, and we ask that you would bring a measure of healing, comfort, hope, and encouragement.
judgment into their lives and situations, Lord. And we pray that you would bless the treatment they're receiving in hospitals uh, from GPs and counselors and whatever uh, treatments they are, Lord, that you would give the increase and that you would bring a measure of healing and total healing we can Lord. We must submit to your will, but we know that you are a great and glorious God. And we, Lord, come to you <coughs> recognizing that it's anything too hard for the Lord, and we know that it's not, Lord. So we thank you for that. We pray as families concerned that your grace and love would uh, just touch us all in every individual uh, aspect of our families, Lord, and you know the struggles each family has, Lord. We ask, Father, that you would bring healing and hope and salvation, Lord. We think of those in difficult work situations, Lord. We ask, Father, that you would just intervene to bring, to bring blessing and breakthrough and encouragement, Lord, that you would help your people as they serve you in their work environment. And Lord, that you would show your hand upon them and that you would give them all that is needed, Lord, to, to really uh, do their work in the way that they want to do it. And that all uh, stumbling blocks and obstacles being put in the paths of your people would be removed, Lord. And that you would have the final say in all things, Lord, because in all things, you do indeed have the preeminence, Father. So, Lord, be with those who are not here tonight. Look after them. Bless the elderly in our congregation. May they know, Lord, a special touch and special blessing of the Lord in their situations to strengthen them day by day as they look to you. So, our gracious God, we do pray then that we, as we go from here, that we could acknowledge, as always, that it was truly good for us to have been together here this evening. And we ask for it, Lord, in the precious name of Jesus, with the forgiveness of all our sins and for his sake. Amen. We'll sing our first hymn now. It's a well-known hymn called Blessed Assurance, Jesus is Mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine, heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. And we have that assurance as we're trusting in Christ that all these blessings are ours. Let's sing this to God's praise. <coughs> Amen. Mm -hmm. 
We'll read from God's Word in Psalm 84 on page 626 of your church Bibles. That's Psalm 84, page 626. And we'll read from verse 1, we'll read the whole psalm. How lovely is your dwelling place, O Lord of hosts. My soul longs, yes, faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and flesh sing for joy to the living God. Even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for herself, where she may lay her young at your altar, O Lord of hosts, my King and my God. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the highways to Zion. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. They go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. O Lord God of hosts, hear my prayer. Give ear, O God of Jacob. Behold our shield, O God. Look on the face of your anointed, for a day in your courts is better than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. For the Lord God is the sun and shield. The Lord bestows favour and honour. No good thing does he withhold from those who walk uprightly. O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. Amen. And we thank the Lord for that reading of his own holy and precious word. And we give him all praise, honour and glory. We'll sing once again, this time in Psalm 84 as well. And we'll sing the rest of the psalm from verse 7 to the end of the psalm. So they from strength and weary go, still forward unto strength, until in Zion they appear before the Lord at length. And we'll sing to the end of the psalm, the verse mark for <coughs> So
Before we turn to God's word, we'll pray once again. Father, again, we're so thankful and grateful that we are found together around your word in your house, Lord, with your people. And we bless you and thank you for the promises and assurance we have of your grace and help to us. And we do look to you to bless us, Lord. We ask that you would help us this evening as we turn to your word, that you would help us. Help me, Lord, uh, to rightly divide the word of truth. And I pray, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to understand what you are saying to us and that we would hear you, Lord, and that we would receive what you say, Lord. And that we would be built up, strengthened, encouraged, Lord, refreshed and renewed. And that, Lord, we would be edified in so many ways. We pray, Lord, that your spirit would lead us into your truth. We do remember, Father, those who are not with us. We pray you would be with them where they are, Lord and that you would look after them and bless them this evening. Especially think of Amy, Lord, in China. We thank you for her and her mum and dad and aunties. And we pray that you bless their family at this time. And in particular, Amy, Lord, in her studies and in her Christian uh, walk and life with you, Lord, uh, in China, that you would provide her, Lord, with all that she needs to strengthen her, sustain her, and to uphold her, Lord. We do pray, Father, for these things uh, in the name of Jesus and for his sake with the forgiveness of all our many sins. Amen. Psalm 84 is a much loved psalm, beautiful psalm as indeed are many of the Psalms. They're all God's Word and we all have our particular favourites that we go to. And this is indeed a particular favourite that's spoken to me and still speaks to me, as does the rest of God's Word. And tonight, for a short while, I want to think of uh, <coughs> pilgrimage in the terms of God's blessing. We know that John Bynion wrote a marvellous book, Pilgrim's Progress, and the progress was, we spoke about it, from the city of destruction to the celestial city, and he met with a lot of difficulties on the way. And this psalm uh, speaks three times about the blessing of God in particular. Blessed are those who dwell in your house, ever singing your praise. Blessed are those whose strength is in you, in whose heart are the ways to Zion, are the highways to Zion. So the community of God, blessed are those and then again, blessed are those. Blessed are those who are in the house. Blessed are those who are on the way. And finally, in the last verse, it's, O Lord of hosts, blessed is the one who trusts in you. And as a community of faith, it's a blessing to be together in the Lord's house, to be singing his praise. As a community of faith, it's a blessing to be on that pilgrimage together but ultimately it comes down to this bless is the one who trusts in you and we are a family a body a corporate unit but ultimately it is your faith in Christ and my faith in Christ that's important for each of us. Lord, we are all important to each other, but my faith would take you to heaven, your faith would take me to heaven. My faith will pray for you, your faith will pray for me. And it's the 
to say that everyone needs to have that individual relationship with God. And of course, when we do have the individual relationship with God, we find that we want to be with the body of Christ. Because that's just the way it is. If we're not with the body, we feel kind of strange because it's our body as well. And we're part of it. So tonight, I want to think of the blessing of the people of God. The blessing of God is my theme, and I want to look at verses 5 to 7, and in particular, it's the blessing of God in the pilgrimage of faith. Initially, the psalmist is taken up with the loveliness of the dwelling place of God. The temple is lovely because God's presence dwells there in a wonderful way. God and his house are intimately related to the psalmist. And the psalmist associates the presence of the Lord with being there. How important it is for you and I to gather, to worship our Lord together. Of course, we know that as Christians we have permanent communion with God wherever we are. But before the Incarnation, the worship of God was connected with outward hills. It was connected with the Temple, which was types and shadows of the reality of Jesus. The Psalmist speaks about the nests of the swallows, the sparrow, even the sparrow finds a home and the swallow a nest for mm-hmm. herself where she may lay her young at your altars, oh my God, and so on. Now, the nests are a resting place, are a home for the sparrows and swallows. God is our rest. Our rest is in Jesus. And the psalmist, like the sparrow, would find God at the altar of his prayer. And our altar, of course, is not the altar in the temple but the altar of our Lord Jesus Christ, who gave himself on the cross at Calvary. The psalmist longs and yearns for the presence of God in the house of the Lord. He has an intense yearning for the house of the Lord. His soul faints for the courts of the Lord. His heart is flesh, that is his whole being, ring out in praise to the living God. For he is taken by the greatness of God and the gentle care of God. This glorious God who is infinite provides a nest at his own altar for the sparrow and the swallow. And uh, it's almost like he's envious of those who are constantly in the Lord's house singing his praise. And he dis- this is a pilgrim who describes the blessedness of those who are on the journey of those who prepare to enter the presence of the Lord in worship. And I want to look at this evening five things, the blessing of God in spiritual strength, the blessing of God in spiritual refreshment, the blessing of God in spiritual renewal, the blessing of God in spiritual sustenance, and the blessing of God in spiritual steadfastness. The Psalmist focuses on the journey to the holy city to worship the Lord. Now we know from the scriptures that three times a year the males of Israel were to appear before the Lord for solemn feasts. In Deuteronomy 16, 6, three times a year all your males shall appear before the Lord your God at the place that he will choose, at the feast of unleavened bread, at the feast of weeks, and at the Feast of Booths. Now this may have been in the context of one of the festivals that this pilgrimage was being made, or it may have been simply that the psalmist has been unable to attain the worship of God because of some uh, trial or illness. Some have suggested that it may have been an exile remembering the blessings 
of the Lord, house of the Lord, that it, it seems a bit unlikely that because it seems the house of the Lord is there and people are going to it. Whatever the case is, that reminder to us of the great privileges we have of worshiping God with his people in the sanctuary. There are many that cannot do this. They have to hide their faith because of the risk to their lives. I've often heard people speaking of days gone by, seeing believers walking on their way to worship God together. And I'm sure some of our uh, more mature uh, Christians here will remember these times when people would walk miles to come to the house of God to worship. In days before cars, pretty much no one had a car except maybe the the laird or the factor. Everybody heard. It was a beautiful sight. And I remember reading uh, at the gleanings of the Highland Harvest, I think it was, there was a man who walked from Skye to the Burn at Berlin Tosh. And some of you may have heard of the Burn. It's like an open air amphitheater. It's a very natural uh, place where uh, the church would gather to preach and to hear the word of God. And multitudes would gather there. They had great, great uh, Scottish preachers there. Spurgeon even came to Daniel to, to preach, and I'm sure he preached up the burn. I may be wrong on that, but don't quote me on that. Uh, one person from Sky, there was a multitude of 10,000 people gathered at the burn. This is in the Highlands, 10,000 people. And he was weeping with joy. And he said, oh, if only my wife were here. Oh, if only my children were here. And then he said, oh, if only all of Sky were here. And that, friends, is the blessing of the Lord for that pilgrim who came from Sky. So the blessing of the Lord gives us spiritual strength. Blessed are those whose strength is in you and whose heart are the highest desire. Gives us spiritual strength. The psalmist says that the pilgrim who makes the journey is blessed. And his strength is in the Lord. It's not his own strength. The Lord gives the help we need, whose strength is in you. This is first speaking of the covenant relationship the pilgrim has with God, whose strength is in you. That's speaking of relationship and covenant relationship. Uh, Lord of hosts, Lord is the Lord's covenant name. The psalmist praises the loveliness of the dwelling place of God because of the presence of God being there. And in verse 4, four he declares how blessed the ones who dwell in the house of the Lord are. They are ever singing praise. They are dwelling in the dwelling place of God. To dwell with God is a reason for our hearts to sing with joy. And if God dwells in us, how wonderful that is. The psalmist praises God. The strength is not something that you or I can have in ourselves. It is found in you in God. This is speaking of those who are on their way to the temple, on their pilgrimage. They are on their way, and the way is in their hearts by grace. It is the tabernacles of God's grace that they are on their way to. And that's wonderful. The tabernacles of grace. Friends, when we meet together, we meet around the means of grace. God's word, fellowship, prayer. The blessing of God gives us spiritual strength. And the blessing of God gives us strength to set our hearts on him. Those who are blessed to abide in God's presence find their strength in him, in whose hearts are the highway to Zion. And of course this is talking about the Jewish pilgrims who journeyed up to Zion to worship in God's house. Ways, this means highways or public roads and they are considered the ways the pilgrim came 
and the stopping places they had. And to say the highways are in their hearts is to say they have their hearts set on the Lord and the worship of God. Finding strength in God and seeking God on the journey of faith. Walking with them on the pilgrimage of faith strengthens our faith and it strengthens our sincerity. Whose heart in whose heart are the highways of Zion? This is a heart thing. Somebody once said about sin, the problem, the heart of the problem is a problem with the heart. That's the problem for mankind. The heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? But the heart of the believer has the ways of God. There is a sincerity in the person of by faith who desires the presence and the power of God. The highway to Zion, clearly, the worshippers' journey. If God's ways are in our hearts, then we are sincere about God. We want God. And pilgrimage is not an easy thing. It's a tough trip. We think of the pioneers who crossed America. They wanted California. They wanted that new life. They wanted something better. And we want that. It's a pilgrimage. We want that life that we've been given. And we want the conclusion of it with Christ. You see, God's ways are in our heart. Then we are sincere about God and our faith. And the pilgrimage, the way is narrow. It's only one way. It's only one track. The way we know of course, is the Lord Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit has in the New Testament revealed to us Jesus. Jesus, God with us. Emmanuel, God with us. John 14, 6. Jesus said to him, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. He became flesh and dwelt among us. It is put he tabernacled among us. And Eugene Peterson translates it. He pitched his tent among us, which I suppose what a tabernacle is, a tent. The tabernacle, we know, was God's dwelling place. And it was a type pointing to the Lord Jesus Christ. It pointed us to Jesus in his person and work, and as the one who is our high priest, and who gave himself as the sacrifice for our sins on the cross. God has made the way and he is the way. God is with us. We looked at the dwelling place of God in the morning, Jesus, the temple, the meeting place, who was destroyed and rebuilt himself in three days. God raised Jesus. He, Jesus raised himself and the Holy Spirit raised Jesus. Basically, God raised Jesus. Uh, the dwelling place of God are, of course, believers in union with Christ. And the dwelling place of God is indeed lovely. And the tabernacle is full of his grace. The dwelling place of God is full of his grace. And it's full of his truth. Jesus is full of grace and truth. And, friends, as the dwelling place of God, you are full of the grace of God and the truth of God in Christ. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. Worship is, our worship is focused on Jesus, who is God with us. And our journey is one of looking to him. Fix your eyes upon Jesus. The blessing of God helps us to fix our eyes and set our heart upon his way, the Lord Jesus. Now, the blessing of God gives us strength and the blessing of God gives us sincerity. The blessing of God gives us strength to seek God's presence. The heart of those who were determined to travel to Jerusalem were truly set on seeking God's presence. Their hearts were longing to worship God. Isn't it the truth? We want to know more of God. We want to get closer to God. And then we find we're sinful. We want more of God. 
and it was so strong that they were willing to travel many miles in adverse conditions. They found their strength for the journey in the joy they would experience when they reached Zion and rejoiced in the Lord's blessing. You know, Jesus were told for the joy set before him endured the cross. So the blessing of God gives us strength to seek God's blessing and gives us spiritual refreshment. Even when they pass through the valley of weeping, as they go through the valley of Dekah, or Baca, as it's pronounced in Hebrew, they make it a place of springs. The early rain also covers it with pools. Many of the worshippers who travelled up to Jerusalem had to pass through the valley of Baca. It's projected as a dry place and a difficult part of the journey. And Baca is the Hebrew word, sometimes used for balsam trees. And the word Baca is also wailing and weeping, associated with weeping. And it may be that one commentator suggested that the balsam tree that grows in very dry places drips water like tears. The valley of Baca derives from the Hebrew term Baca to weep. And this is the only place in the Bible we read it. And many scholars and Bible commentators think that this may not have been an actual place. Rather, they think it may have been used poetically as a symbol of the painful experiences that make us weep in our journey through our lives. In this, the Valley of Baca is a symbol of the affliction of God's people. And we remember that Moses chose affliction with the people of God. The word for pools is beraku, very similar to the word beraku, blessings, pools and blessings. The Hebrews were, they were good at word play. There were blessings in the midst of life's afflictions. The words were almost identical. This may be a play on words as the pools are basically evidence of God's blessing. But whether Baca is real or a symbolic place, the message of this verse is wonderfully beautiful. It represents the trials and troubles of life. The experience is what causes us to weep. But the blessing of God gives us, in the midst of the valley of Baca, spiritual renewal, there are springs of joy. God's presence comforts us in this valley, refreshing and renewing our spirit in the worst times. His presence and his word empowers us to make it a spring. The psalmist longed, you see, for the living God. And the Lord, he is the living God. And he gives living water. These are springs of living water that God gives. These are not uh, cisterns that we should dig for ourselves to look for hope, but these are the springs of living water that God pours out in us. Uh, the pilgrim with God's blessing finds the valley of Baca a place of spiritual refreshment and renewal. And you know, I've often found in very difficult times that I've experienced the blessing of God in very many ways. And I'm sure that many here would testify to the same thing. A place of spiritual refreshment and renewal, a place where springs, springs, fountains of blessing are. And the pilgrim with the blessing of God makes it a place of blessing for others, because as the springs of blessing are coming into our lives, even in the difficult times, we are able to bless others and comfort others with the comfort we ourselves have received. A pool of blessing, a spring of blessing, it turns them into spiritual refreshment, comfort and joy. And there are 
goes in the desert and the oasis of God's grace. The Lord will fill them with the heavenly way of his blessing. There are times, friends, when the flows and springs of God's presence will cause you to weep, not with sorrow, but in joy and thanksgiving. The joyful tears of the pilgrims transformed the source of sadness into a spring of blessing. Just as the early rains of autumn, we talk, uh, Joel talks about the rains, restored the water to the valley. So friends, the blessing of God gives spiritual renewal and it gives spiritual refreshment, gives spiritual sustenance. Growing stronger, it says, until you appear before him, life's pilgrimage. As they go through the valley of Baca, they make it a place of spring. The early rain also covers it with pools. And here's another remarkable fact about this verse. The Hebrew word for I is I. And the Hebrew word for spring and fountain is I. It's the same word. And the, the place of weeping where maybe tears are springing from the eyes of the afflicted people of God turns into a place where springs of blessing will make tears of joy come from their eyes. The blessing of God turns it into a spring of blessing, a fountain of blessing, because we're told spiritual sustenance, the people of God will go from strength to strength. Each one appears before God in Zion. On their spiritual journey, each one of us, we are in the presence of God. And we're in communion with God. And in the secret place, we speak to God. And in our time together, we worship God together. And there is a time when each one, of course, will appear before God in Zion. The believer goes spiritually refreshed, renewed, and sustained and transformed throughout their lives, going from strength to strength, growing ever stronger. In growing in grace and in knowledge and in love. The truth is we grow older and frailer, but inwardly we are being renewed every day by the blessing of the Lord. Second Corinthians 4 16. So we do not lose heart, though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed every day. There is a joy for the believer to come into the Lord's presence in worship. But also there's a reminder that we will all appear, we will all appear before God. Those who rejoice in him and love him, and those who don't, the thought of appearing before God should make everyone want to be ready to appear before God, to be prepared before God. Not only will the believers appear, but so will those who hated him and those who rejected him. Any appearance must be one that can only be in Christ. Friends, we should be prepared to meet our God. The blessing of God gives us finally spiritual steadfastness. What's that? Power to persevere. We talked about this in the morning. It's suiting in very well with our morning service. Persevering power, staying power, to continue on. Power to keep on, keeping on. As believers near the end of their journey, God's promises are always yes and amen. They were yes and amen at the start of our journey. And as we go to the close of our journey, they will always be yes and amen. And given time and in eternity, they are yes and amen in Jesus Christ. You know, we will go from strength to strength. Our blessing becomes greater because the grace of God is sufficient for every difficulty. The longer we travel, God's presence and power will give you and I the help we need along the way. 
So friends, we looked at these five very brief points, spiritual strength, spiritual refreshment, spiritual renewal, spiritual sustenance, and spiritual steadfastness. Uh, what we have here is a picture of our pilgrimage. The pilgrim's journey is a picture of our journey through life. We are strangers and pilgrims in this world. It's not our home. This world is not my home. I'm just a passing through. We are on our way to a better country, heaven, the new creation, the new heaven and earth where we will live eternally in God's presence. And we know that this pilgrimage has many difficulties, many temptations and dangers <coughs> and trials and it's often very, very wearying. But we don't get tired of the journey. But we often get tired in the journey. Spoke to Jenny yesterday and she said, you know, I'm on the journey, she said, down to Birmingham on the train. And what gets me, she said, and makes me tired is the motion of the train. And you know, she was doing nothing, it was a train. Sometimes she would laugh at it from all sides, and we love the journey, we love the Lord, but we get tired in it, because we're, we're being thrown all over the place by, by so many different experiences and temptations. As we found out in the Word, we find that out in our experience. We are blessed along the way, for the Lord's presence is always with us. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you, and behold, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. So, friends, our pilgrimage, in spite of the difficulties, and there are difficulties, I don't need to tell you there are difficulties, you all know. And there are tears, we all know that. But our pilgrimage is a blessed one. When we have to pass through the valley of tears, and we've all gone there, God himself comforts us, refreshing us and renewing us, our spirits, and we are filled with joy and praise because we have the promises and the presence and the power of our Lord strengthening us. We are given his strength in every step of the journey every day. And he said, my presence shall go with you and I will give you rest. Wherever we go, his presence will go with us and we can rest in his grace. Fear not. I have redeemed you. I have called you by name and you are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall the clay kindle upon you. So friends, may the Lord bless this precious word to us this evening. And we'll sing our last <coughs> hymn, Be Thou My Vision, one of our great Celtic hymns with a wonderful Celtic tune. Be Thou My Vision, O Lord of my heart, those <coughs> whose ways, whose ways, uh, whose in whose heart are the highways I and mean, in whose heart are the ways will love to sing this song. Let's sing it to the face of God. <laughs>
blessed Heavenly Father, we do thank you, praise you, and bless you, Lord, that you are our companion throughout life and uh, through life's journey, Lord, and you are there with us. And we thank you, Lord, for our for rejoicing. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the friendship and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit bless and remain with you and with those who do know this night, now, and forevermore. Amen.